welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Spurvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Spurvey. Natalie Oldfield, welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast. I'm grateful for you taking the time. Thanks for having me. This has been a little while in the making. I'm so happy and pleased we, we get this opportunity. Uh, we've probably known each other, I don't know, maybe a, a eight months or so, eight to 12 months. And uh, uh, I, I heard you speak uh, here in St. John's, Newfoundland. And I said, this is a lady I need on my podcast. So this is oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So why don't we just back up? I'd love for you to fill uh, my audience in on, uh, you know, who you are and what your what br- I, what brings you to this day in 2018 doing what you're doing. Well, that's a great question. Well, as as you mentioned, my name is Natalie Doyle Oldfield, and what brings me to this day in 2018? <laughs> what a great question. <laughs> Well, I, several years ago, I, while I was chief marketing officer for a software company, I started to notice that some of the most successful companies and some of the company and some of the professionals, like the people in the organizations that either had the most referrals, client referrals, or had the most partnership opportunities, and quite honestly, had the highest sales and revenue, um, and had, you know, they had to do the least amount of proposals were all had something in common. They all had really high trust of their customers. Mm. And, um, you know, I noticed that it wasn't just the people, but it was also the companies. So companies in general that had more partnership opportunities and more opportunities to do more unique type projects yes. you didn't have to really do requests for proposals had this in common mm. so I noticed that and then I decided while working full-time as chief marketing officer for a software company uh, responsible for marketing and sales and I mentioned that because we're talking about sales today yeah um, I decided to do graduate research and I did my master's in um, communications in public relations and I really looked into buying behavior and how customers decide to trust companies mm. so fast forward uh, since then uh, finishing that degree a few years ago I wrote a book called the power of trust how top companies build manage and protect it and um, I created an online course called becoming a trusted advisor yeah. And I um, created a measurement tool, a survey diagnostic instrument called the Client Trust Index. And that measures a customer's trust in an organization. So to find out more about this, all of that, you, um, you can go to my website, which is www.successthroughtrust.com. That is wonderful. What a great uh, synopsis in a very short period of time as well. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I, I, I fully agree with you. I mean, I spent, uh, you know, within the, cons- within the consulting industry, I spent 15 years and, and uh, you know, went from a boutique size IT consulting company up, and up to a larger, uh, obviously a much larger uh, multinational consulting company, KPMG. And mm-hmm. I would had I would agree with you 100%. The people who are in, in the terminology that I've heard, uh, not that I use it very much, rainmakers. They're they're yes. people who seem to just attract business. Uh, they're the ones who are truly trusted advisors to their clients and don't necessarily have to quote unquote sell. You know, they they sell through their conversations and so on. So trust, I, I'm with you 100%. Trust is that common denominator between them all. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I believe, Chris, that none of us really want to be sold to. Mm-hmm. And like you, I worked for some of one of the world's largest consulting firms. Yeah. And um, they, the ones with the highest trust equity with their clients were, as as you mentioned, often called rainmakers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what I what I also believe on top of no one really wants to be sold to 
is I also believe that people don't buy unless they trust. And so they, I really believe that without trust, there is no sale. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I think that um, organizations, whether it's a company or a nonprofit organization, uh, and I believe people have to sell a nonprofit too. You know, you're trying to raise money for donors or for activities or an events, but you know, organizations, whether it's a company or a nonprofit or for profit, face greater scrutiny from a more informed and skeptical customer than ever before. Mm. And that really the last competitive advantage an organization has is the customer's trust in them because you, you can have, you know, the most innovative best in class products with the most patents and the, you know, the fanciest services, but without the customer's trust, they won't buy. There, yeah. There's no sale. How, uh, I agree with you 100%. How, so I'm thinking about my audience, uh, the people who are listening. Many of them are uh, CEOs of small, medium businesses. Uh, and the reason they're listening to my show is because they uh, love what they do. They love their product. Uh, they believe in their product, but they struggle uh -huh. to build. They struggle to build uh, the steady flow of revenue necessary to create profitability long term and have have trajectory uh, going up. You know, um, yes. What What's your thought? Or, and and I, I guess that's not a question. I, but I'm where I'm going. I, I'm curious where my head is. Is like I I reflect on my childhood, and I think yes. about lots of friends I had. And I mean, there was certain friends who were trustworthy, and there were certain yes. friends who just were not trustworthy. Right. Yes. Is, is trust hardwired or uh, are we, are we hardwired to be trustworthy or uh, can we build, can we build within us the capability to be trustworthy? We can build it. It yeah. is a skill that can be learned. Yeah. And um, like many of your listeners, many, many of the companies that I work with, they, you know, they wonder why their business isn't growing. Right. Mm -hmm. And they worry about why their sales are flat or declining and why they don't have referrals or why they don't hear about opportunities and how come they're not getting repeat business or why negotiation negotiating with a customer is so stressful and drawn out. Right. And um, what is so exciting, Chris is when I was doing my master's um, I was looking, as I mentioned for best practices of how, how, customers decide to trust and I actually focused on business to business yeah. so I do work with some organizations that business to consumer but primarily in in my research I focused on and do continue to focus on business to business and and what we found is at the heart uh, there are eight principles at the heart of the customers decision to trust a company okay. and so saying that, um, I will give you a caveat. It's very important, right, for, for us all to remember is that for business leaders especially, um, that customers don't buy from companies. They buy from people. Right. Right. And so that's, that is really important. Yeah. And it's specifically people who are informed, empowered. They can solve customer problems and issues. And, you know, and what I would suggest is they, they're trusted advisors. And mm. like I said, it is a skill that can be learned. You can learn to build trust. Some people are a bit more natural than others, but um, the research that I've done and validated over seven years of testing with, uh, through the scientific um, process in academia and in business shows that there are eight principles. Okay. And when, you, when you learn these eight principles and learn how to apply them in your business, you will build trust or manage or protect the trust you have with your customers. Mm, lovely. You got me on the edge of my seat. Can we, can we deep dive just slightly into the eight uh, or would it, was it, is sure. it yeah, I'd love to. That's phenomenal. I mean, because from the context of the people listening, you know, they, 
they, they I, you know, so you've laid it out very well. People don't buy from companies, they buy from people. And so how do we as people uh, create a, a trusting, trusting environment? And I mean, the only way to look at that is, is how do clients perceive us and, and so on. So I'm sure the, I'd love for you to dive into the eight. What's number one? Okay. So before I dive into the eight, and I I'm, would love to, and I will go through each of them, these eight principles are part of a model to build trust. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I know you can't see me, but on my paper, because I'm very visual, I'm drawing a circle. Okay. And in the middle of that circle, um, I have, uh, I'm, I'm writing on my notepad, yeah. the um, customer centered trust culture, because to me, it all needs to start with focusing on the customer. Mm. Right. And I know that's something that, that, that you share. We're both very customer focused. Yes, so yes. when an organization starts with a culture of trust that's focused on the customer, it means, you know, we have the organization has clearly articulated values and purpose and um, vision and mission, right? right. And I yeah, really yeah. believe that at the center of every organization's focus and purpose should be a customer strategy because really, and I, I know I'm biased, Chris, but every organization is created to serve a customer. Yeah. Right. So that's a very high level view of the, of the, the center of the model. The next ring, if you draw another ring around that circle is around the, uh, the organization having the capabilities and the competencies that, so they can do what they've promised to do. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll so for example, if it's a manufacturing company, you know, that, that says that they're going to um, manufacture books, well, they would have all the skills and the competencies of manufacturing a book. So they would have writers on staff, they would have either uh, printing suppliers or a printer. It's about having the skills and the competencies. If that's kind of the the more logical, the table stakes, if you will. So, you know, if I'm going to buy a house from a construction company that's going to build it, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make the um, assumption, if you will, even though I use that word carefully, that they have the skills to actually build the house. So they've got the engineers on staff, the architects, the people who are good at electrical the plumbers and all that, right? So they have the skills and the competencies. The next ring around that is about interactions and that's interactions with, with people. Mm. So trust, as you know, as we all know, is at the basic quality in the heart of every human interaction, right? We understand it naturally. So when I start talking about, you think about your childhood and your friends, right? Yeah. And we know when it goes off or when it's damaged. Well, basically, that outer ring is about how we communicate, how we behave, and how we serve. Mm. And the eight principles come out of that. So the eight principles are the following. So that's a, that's a, a big introduction, but now I'm going to go through them for you. So the eight principles of trust and that is with customers inside and outside the organization. Cause sometimes some people on the call, they may be building trust with customers in other departments, right? People in other departments. Yes, absolutely. Internal. Yep. Um, so principle number one is listen carefully with empathy and compassion, question and involve the customer or stakeholder in a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want me to explain each one or just read them? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, maybe maybe add a little bit of context. So I, I agree with you. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing you, and because I think that that's yeah, that's the first layer. Okay. You know? So so communication is the gateway to trust. And listening, I'll just give you a little high level for each. Listening sure. is the gateway to communication, right? So taking the time to listen to customers and stakeholders without bias and without filters, and yeah. demonstrating empathy and compassion and involving them in conversations that affect them is foundational to building and sustaining trust. Yeah. So listening with carefully with empathy and compassion, 
is number one. Number one, got it, yep. Number two is communicate using clear, concrete, and conversational language. Mm. So, you know, clarity inspires trust, and we feel confident when we understand what's happening around us. Yes. So when we don't understand, I mean, typically what happens is we tend to glaze over, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and and when we glaze over, we don't understand. Oftentimes it means we don't believe. So that leads to distrust. Yes. So confidence, clarity, simplicity, inspire trust. So, you know, what I suggest to my clients is strive to communicate simple everyday language that customers and stakeholders understand. Yes. And actually I have a, a whole, it's the biggest chapter in my book around um, this principal area, the guidelines of communicating in clear, concrete language. Cause it's everything from the written word to the spoken word. And yeah. also like, if you think about communication, it, it's also the signage on our buildings or our website or our email signature. So that's yeah. a big, this is a big one. Yeah. I guess it's see, it's seeing through the client's eyes or communicating through the client's eyes. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So trusted advisors, just before we move off principle number two, yeah. trusted advisors are often very good at um, describing issues in the customer's terms and understanding the customer's language, right? Yes. So let, meaning how they communicate and how they describe their business. Yeah. And I guess it's important for, you know, many, many people who decide to start a company, they start the company because they have the problem that needs to be solved. Uh, and what, what, uh, what often, so they go in search or to build a solution. And uh, what often happens, I guess, is as you get into the complexities of growing a business, you, you lose sight of the fact that you were once, the, uh, you were once in the customer's shoes and, and you start using language that's at your level at that present time, you know? Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's so important. Yeah. So principle number three is be honest and transparent Yeah, and honesty is always the best policy. And you know, this, this one um, is about proactively communicating and sharing as much relevant information as you can with your customers. Um, you know, so one simple phrase that, that encourages and promotes trust is the simple but difficult admission for some people of, you know, I don't know. Yes. So trusted advisors under, you know, acknowledge that they don't know every answer, but when you do this, you know, that encourages confidence and humility, which shows self-awareness. And that's, that is one thing that builds trust. So yes, nothing builds trust like the truth. Absolutely. And I, and I guess it has to, you have to have the intent behind it. I mean, it's, it's one thing to say, I'm going to do to apply these principles to my business uh, because it's the, it's, it's what I'm supposed to do because Natalie's book tells me it's the other thing to do with, of course, with the intention yes. of really being trustworthy. Right. So, well, and, and so all of these principles, Chris are for, for people to apply in the way that that is right for them, Absolutely. which is why they're not called laws, right? Mm. They're not the eight laws, but they're eight principles because principles. Yeah. we all have to be sincere yes. in how we do it and authentic, right? Absolutely. And so in each and all of these principles, what flows through them is that we need to be sincere and authentic and be um, thinking about our motives and intentions to be always thinking about doing the right thing for the customer. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in, in my terminology perhaps is win wins, striking a win-win uh, relationship. Yeah. That's Absolutely. awesome. So principle number four is being consistent, predictable, and reliable. Yeah. And you know, what's significant about this principle as it relates to, Selling is that when we combine consistency, predictable, and reliable behavior, communication, and how we serve, it reduces risk and vulnerability. Mm. And 
it's a lot easier to buy from a person or a company or to support a person where we are not at risk. So customers don't want to be at risk. They don't want to be vulnerable. So it's extremely important for trusted advisors and for people who uh, want to become a trusted advisor to really focus on being consistent in all their messages and predictable and reliable. And, you know, one way you could do this as an example is, is to follow up when you mm. say you're going to be on a podcast, make sure you are dialing in exactly at the time you said you would. Yes. Right. Yes. And make sure that, you know, you follow up after a conversation with someone on the telephone. If they ask you to send information and you agree to make sure you send it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was why you know, I visited a client site a couple of days ago and one of the most warming, well, the most warming thing he said to me on that day as I, as I was walking through the door, he, he turned around and said, that's Chris Spur before, 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 uh, looking at me, he said, that must be Chris Spurvey, uh, because he's always right on time. And, uh, isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was warming for me to hear it actually. So that being on time matters to people. Right. Yes. It shows respect. And the 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 one thing we want to do with with building trust is it goes hand in hand with showing someone respect. Mm. Right. Yes. So principle number five is key to becoming a trusted advisor. And, and it's actually what separates, in my opinion, an account manager or a sales rep or um, a rainmaker to a trusted advisor. Right. So a trusted advisor uh, applies principle number five, which is act in the best interest of customers, stakeholders, and the public. Mm. Right. And this is where we get to the heart of intentions and motives. Yes. So, Intentions and motives are key to building, strengthening, and protecting relationships. So your, your customer must believe that, that you are putting their interests first. And trust only succeeds when uh, a customer expectation is met and motives are clear. Right. So to go back to you mentioning about, you know, that you, when you were growing up, there were just some people that you trusted and some you didn't. Well... Yeah. I bet if you and I peel the onion back, it, it would probably come, uh, all of these principles, probably a few of them would come up, but most likely it would be about, I wonder what their intentions and motives were. Mm, of course. Because we know as a customer when a company is doing the right thing for us, right? When they're acting in our best interest, right? Yes. And when they do that, they, they as an example, they might recommend another company's product or services if they don't think that they have the right solution for you. Yeah. Yes, okay? of course. Yeah. Where, where do you think, and, and I don't, I'm not digressing at all from the principles, um, I, but my head is going to competitiveness uh, for some reason. And, and you know, the, there's a, we, I find you can almost put two uh, and whether I'm right or wrong here is, I don't know, but I'm just in my mind putting people in two buckets. One is a, is a person who, uh, is easygoing and, and goes with the flow and looks for great relationships and so on. And then mm -hmm. the other bucket is somebody, uh, is somebody who c competes to win at all costs, uh, type of thing. Um, uh, well, yeah, I'm so curious what you think about that. Well, you're not, you're not uh, having that big of a diversion because principle number eight is commit to the long term. Uh -huh. So trusted advisors, um, they, they're in it for the long term. So right. they're just not competing to win the sale. Yeah, and exactly. I would suggest that trusted advisors, um, it's not, they're, they're not in it to win at all costs. Unless they're winning something for their client, yes, right? So right? The trusted advisors puts, put the best interests of their clients first, yes. which means sometimes they might lose a sale. Yep. Right? Yeah. Well, so, that's what you were referring to there. You were yeah. saying, you were saying how so in some cases, you know, referring other people to uh, referring your customers to other people for the service. Yeah. Or another example might be, or saying, you know, 
it's really not the right time for you to be buying this from us. Yes. Now, I know you need this new piece of equipment. However, this is your busy time. And if you purchase in January, we're going to have a big sale. And I know cost is really important to you and you want to, you know, pay for it over X number of months. Yeah. Maybe you should do it then or when you're not as busy in, in the shop or whatever. Exactly. Um, or, you know, another example might be, well, you know, we really might, might not want to push this through this quickly because people need more time to look at this project and for the change to really take place. We shouldn't do it in a month. We should really do this project over a three month basis. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great example. It's, yeah. it's really about, you know, so on the competitive side, I would suggest those folks will never be true trusted advisors. No, exactly. This is where, yeah, that's where my head goes. Right. Uh, Cause, and there are, there are many people out there. They, uh, when you really peel back the layers of the onion, they're, and many of them go back to the childhood. Uh, I guess where I don't know what the I don't know what 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 creates these types of individuals, but ultimately they're they're in they're in everything to win. I know I know one person very close to me who uh, just personifies that. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So um, that's awesome. Yeah. No. So so you you I jumped you forward. Uh, okay. Uh, to number well, eight. I'll be quick. Yeah, no, this is, no, this is really good. So you, I think we left six and seven is what we have left, is it? Yeah, so principle number six is do the right thing. Yes. So if you make a mistake, fix it, right? Nothing's going to um, more clearly project your values and your integrity and your ethics than doing the right thing. And, you know, this is one principle you can never compromise, even if it costs you a sale or business in the short term. Mm. So you know, when, when you or your organization makes a mistake, which every organization makes mistakes because they're made up of people, Yes. just communicate how you will fix it and do so in a timely manner. Right. And what I usually say to people, you know, when they have a specific example is I say, well, you know, fix it in the way it, if it happened to you that you would want it to be fixed, that you would be proud of. Yes. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot in this principal area. I, you know, I do work with some clients on make, um, getting ready for a trust crisis yeah. and, you know, how do you fix something if you've had a crisis, but that's kind of a high level of do the right thing. Right. Um, yeah. So no, principle number seven is deliver on your promise. And this is about walking the talk, demonstrating integrity by delivering on what you say you're going to do, keeping your commitments, behaving in harmony with your, your values and having the capabilities you say you have, measuring, you know, continually to stay up to date with your skills and honoring your word. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big area and it's really, it's important because every customer wants what we promise to deliver, right? Right. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. so when I'm when I'm doing a workshop with folks, what I what I do, I have a little handout, and in it's got boxes on it, and one of the boxes is, has is you know what is it that you promise your customers you will do, you know, so it could be you know the the you know quickest service, best um, highest quality software, it could be you know results it could be i'm trying i don't know all the, the folks that are on your call um or on your listening to us but you know it, whatever your promise is you know it could be the fastest delivery it could be you know the best experience in your hotel it could be the most skilled professional services people the most educated consultants, whatever it is, you must yeah. deliver on your promise. Right. Yeah. And lastly, principle eight is commit to the long term. Long term. Yeah. 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 So, tr so time is a major factor with, with this. And as I started saying, you know, draw a circle on your paper in and around all these rings are, is the element of time. Mm. And, 
principle number eight, which is commit to the long term, is so important because trust is assessed and reassessed continually over time through our experience with an organization or with a person, right? Yes, yes. So, you know, we all want to deal with people who are committed to us long term. And for companies and, and for sales professionals, it's about setting goals and innovative and, you know, being fully informed and knowledgeable in our industry and achieving and measuring results and a continual focus on building, strengthening and protecting relationships. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, well, I guess the trust can be broken probably faster than it can be built. Would that be correct? Do you think? Um, it, de- it depends. So trust is very fragile. Yeah. And in some cases, depending on how, <laughs> how significant or um, bad the mistake is, it could be broken pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, however, it, it does, and it takes time to develop. And, and, you know, I would say that, that if you have a high trust equity, you, you have more, if you will, deposits in the bank. So if mm-hmm. you think about a bank account, right, yeah. you have a lot of money in the bank, you, you can take, have a lot of withdrawals, right? Yes. You, you can, you can withdraw $5 every day for your Starbucks coffee. If you don't have a lot in the bank, you, you can't do that many withdrawals. No, that's right. <laughs> right? At Great some point, you got to stop. Yeah. So trust and having trust equity is, you know, it's similar but different. But the analogy is, is, is um, works that, you know, when you have high trust equity, you can make mistakes. So when you have high trust with a client – a client is more forgiving, mm. right? So for people in sales, it's all about becoming a trusted advisor because when you are a trusted advisor, you holistically know your client and they holistically know you. So you have a mutual understanding and they you understand each other so that if you make a mistake or your organization does, you can be open, honest, and upfront about what happened. And then the, the, the trust may be diminished a bit but not destroyed. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can reflect on numerous uh, circumstances in my career when I was in cor- in sort of the corporate world where I, you know, I, I might have said something that I didn't really mean and, and in, yeah. the, in the context and so on, but because I had developed such a, a, a strength and relationship, all it took was a phone call and, and get us back on the, you know, and, and apologies, number one. And then uh, number two, uh, you know, just work, work to build it from that point up again. And you're right, it, it, it very quickly rebounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you do, if you make that mistake early in the relationship before there's deposits uh, put in the bank account, uh, you're, you know, you, you, you easily get down to zero, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know what? And so everybody makes mistakes, Chris. And yeah. I, I think that, 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 you know, all of these principles that I mentioned, they, they all have several layers to them. So we didn't talk about vulnerability, but, you know, when a leader or when, when someone shows their vulnerability, and, like you just did, yes, that builds trust with your listeners because, you know, we think, okay, well, I've done that too, right? Absolutely. And, and we all have made mistakes. A lot of, you know, a lot of us are okay with admitting it. But when we show our vulnerability, that is a trust building activity, mm. right? And so I w- that is part of principle number one. Yes. So e- each principle has several layers. We just talked about, you know, a high level today. Of course. But, you know, the bottom line really is that it is measurable. You can measure your customer's trust in you. I have, um, as I mentioned, I have a, an instrument that measures – a survey instrument that measures customers trusting you, but I also have an instrument that I call the tr- the trust equity meter for yeah. individuals, and and you know it does take hard work, but you know 
it's about being purposeful and, and committing to it long term. Yeah, that's wonderful. What a great message. And so if any, if listeners want to learn more about the, uh, so j- let me just get them straight. Do you have the, the, uh, the index? Yeah. Are there two client instruments? Client Trust Index. Client Trust Index. And then there was oh. the one that's applicable to the individual. Did I get that right? Yeah. 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 So what's that, what's that one called? Uh, sorry. Um, well, I call that the trust equity, equity. leader, and yep. really, I mean, that's about um, helping people become trusted advisors. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. and yeah. because I really believe, like I said, that you know everybody wants to buy from someone that's going to be helpful, right? Yes. And someone that's going to give them advice. Yeah. What would you say? Uh, let's just imagine there's a person listening who is brand new to business. Uh, maybe they've let's just say they've jumped out uh, on their own to start a con- as a consultant and they have very little money left in the bank. So they, they and they want to go grow a customer base. They know they need to be aggressive. Uh, so the idea of not selling, and I know that's not what you're saying, but trust being a trusted advisor takes time, right? And with time, you there, there are certain stresses uh, in terms of owning a business that sometimes you may you may have to, you may have to just force it a little bit. Does that make sense? Uh, and so, what would you say to that? Uh, obviously, commit long term to the trusted advisor uh, and, and being tr- and and doing all the right things. Uh, maybe and I'm, maybe I'm going to answer my own question. It just means getting out there and talking to more people with the mindset of being a trusted advisor. Would, would I be right in saying that? I would agree. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I was really happy you talked yourself into that. Yeah. I, I would agree because, you know, at the end of the day, I really don't, um, I really don't think that trusted advisors are aggressive, right? They're no. patient. Patient. They're patient and have a very long-term view because it's not about them. It's about the client. And uh, it's not about them making a number or closing a deal exactly. or, you know, moving a, a client along in the sales process before they're ready. So I, I would, I would suggest what, what you mentioned, and that is when you're starting out to have more opportunities, exactly. right. To, to make more calls. Now, with that being said, there are ways you can build trust um, with, a client or, or a prospect in the beginning that you can get help. So third party credible sources help you build trust. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, so someone, if, if I were to advise someone in the scenario you were just talking about, I would say, okay, well, what, what can we do to help build trust in our business and in our company? So I would suggest they might consider sharing customer testimonials of what you did for other companies. Right. And those testimonials would have a couple of components in them. And one of them would be the experience that the customer had working with them. Right. And the, the other part of it would, would be about um, the results that you, that the company gave them, right? Yes. What was the return on working with you? Right. And because we, there's this thing, um, concept called transference of trust. So you and I, as an example, we, we, we were introduced by a mutual friend that yes. we, we both have a relationship with our, our friend named Steve. So when he introduced us, he said to me, Oh, you should meet Chris. Yes. Right. Yes. And so that, that was, um, a transfer of his trust onto you Mm, other ways, you know, cause we all want to make connections, right? Yeah. So in principle, number one, it's really about making a connection with someone. Yeah. I always say we're one conversation away from a breakthrough, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know, and today, um, it's not six degrees of separation anymore. No. you know, like I, I got an email this morning from uh, a fellow I used to work with, a client, and telling me about his son who um, is in need of a new kidney. He needs a kidney transplant because he has a disease. He's only 26 years old. And 
I read the email in full and then I called him and I used to work and live in Connecticut and his son works and lives in Connecticut. So I said, you know what? His name was Mark. I said, Mark, I don't know if I would know anyone that would be a match for your son, but what I will do is I will share your email with the folks I know in Connecticut. Mm, wonderful. And, and the, the thing is, I mean, it's a small world now. Yeah. Right. Those people I, and he's like, I had no idea you ever lived and worked in Connecticut. <laughs> and, and I said, I know, but you know what? We both, we both know people there and I would be happy to, you know, send along the email and lo and behold, someone that I sent it to, she said, you know what? She said, um, I'm really glad you shared this with me and I'm going to share this with other people. Wow. What an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all about connections, right? And so yeah. when you try, if you're starting a new company and you're, you're, you're ready to sell and, and like you, which you talk about in your book, we, sh we should all be ready to sell from the beginning, right? Yeah. <laughs> because we, we should be creating products and services and offerings that uh, customers want to buy yeah. and are interested in because we're filling a need for them or doing something for them. Um, we can make connections in the beginning. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's a great time to make connections. It's it's at the point of telling the telling the story behind why you're doing what you're doing, and Absolutely. stories res stories resonate. You know, it's it's where, when you first start. It's when you should be talking to more to, to the most people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, trusted advisors are not aggressive. No, no, I love they're that. That's, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, so this is really, really good. This has been a jam-packed 45 minutes or whatever it's been. Uh, you've thrown out a couple of really good things. I, I really want people to l find, learn more from you and learn more about these. Uh, well, number one, what you do. I mean, I, I, it sounds like you do speaking and corporate advisory work uh, uh, and, and as well uh, your, your index uh, and so on. So you mentioned at the start your website. Is there any other... Uh, I know on your website you have you have a, a downloadable PDF. Uh, was it how to become a trusted advisor or something like I that? I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. And um, we we have a downloadable PDF. We also have an assessment that you could download that is um, to assess whether or not you're a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. And um, you could also look me up on LinkedIn. Right. Natalie Doyle Oldfield and uh, on LinkedIn and I have a lot of articles on there and um, I would be happy to connect and help any of your listeners become a trusted advisor or build trust with your customers. I really um, would be happy to help in any way I can. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a great passion of yours and it has a ripple effect. So that's amazing. Um, yeah. So uh, and just one last thought, uh, in that, in your downloadable PDF, do you have the circle you referenced? Uh, is there a visual, uh, in that? Uh, no, that's, that's, uh, that's the model of how to build trust. If yep. anyone's interested in that, just ping me, just send yeah. me a note. So if you go on my website, there's a tab that says contact Natalie, and I'd be happy to send you the model. Um, there's the white paper on my website that you can download and yes. it's called, um, now I hope I get this title right. It's uh, called, um, why companies should care what the customers think. And it actually outlines all of the eight principles and the model. Right on. Perfect. Oh so yeah. For those, you know, you could go to my book, but it's, you know, it's a, that's a bigger commitment because it's lots of pages and, uh, you could find that on Amazon.com, but if you're just interested in the model in that circle that I was trying to draw uh, <laughs> through your words, yeah, through my words, yeah. If you if you you could download the white paper or just send me a note, I'd be happy to send it to you. Wonderful, wonderful. And I and I have read your book and thought it was outstanding, which obviously is why you're on my show. So this is uh this is perfect. So I I really appreciate your time. This has been a true joy to have you on my show, and. Uh, Look forward to continuing our relationship. We, we live in each other's backyards practically. And, and uh, I th as we've talked about before, there's a huge compliment between our messages and, and I'm sure some great stuff can come from it. 
Thank you very much, Chris, for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the It's Time to Sell podcast at chrisspurvey.com.